Yeah, sometimes pros don't know what's best for them. They just, uh... <laughs> They just, uh, you know, if I say, what do you guys want? You want best of five or best of 99? They'll be like, whatever you want. Yeah, best of 99, sure. Yeah, France and Spain. 2v2. Um, Atomica Dorito, one of the top duos to come out of Spain recently. Against a different Vitality duo than we've seen in the past few matches. Zen and Vitality Donkey Kong, also known as Redosa. Yeah, if you guys were getting nice and comfy and used to normal kickoffs in all the France uh, versus France matchups, yeah, prepare for some demos. Uh, thank you, Dorito, for that timing, by the way. That was perfect. Yeah, we're going to get a lot of uh, cheeky kickoffs from the Spanish players, I would imagine. They love it. I love it. Um, I think it's a great thing to do. Tilts your opponents, gets you goals. It gets your opponents second-guessing themselves. And, uh, yeah, I, I think it's probably the... Oh, my. <laughs> what a dunk that is. Zen with an ill-advised 50-50 angle here. Um, Atomic just charges it right into the top corner. Yeah, it's probably one of the most underutilized things. I think my biggest criticism about French 2v2. Because I think French players are the best at 2v2 in the world. Overall. Um, you know, they're the top 2v2 nation, in my opinion. I don't think that's a hot take at all. But I think the weakest element of their game is kickoff variety. They're very good at standard kickoffs. But when it comes to kickoff variety, I think they could do better. Uh, you know, they could be looking at what the Spanish players are doing, looking at what the Brazilians, looking at what the Saudi Arabian players are doing, and uh, trying to take some of those strategies, which are often considered cringe by some of the Rock League community. But you can't deny the success, and you can't deny the tilt factor. Atomic was dominant in the 2v2 mix-up that I had for the Spanish-speaking players in North America pre-Winter Major. I don't think that uh, match made it to YouTube because it didn't complete. Um, and for those of you who are not aware of, uh, of that one, I'll just give you a quick rundown of what happened. Um, yeah, Atomic and CRR came out the bet better of the five, better of the bunch, um, ahead of AJG and... Raise Bull and um, Dorito. But uh, the reason we didn't complete the, the games is because Dorito rage quit. <laughs> he had enough and he left and we had to stop early. Um, he was getting beaten pretty badly. But when it comes to actual 2v2 competition, Dorito has a great history. He, he and CRR did very well. Of course, the gamers ate together. I think him and uh, Atomic are phenomenal. Uh, combination now as well. Yeah, Vitality Donkey Kong is Redosin. I don't know why he's decided to call himself Vitality Donkey Kong, but I don't mind it. I have no rules enforcing players to name themselves any certain way. Vitality trying to test out some different combinations of uh, two teams. <laughs> Rados is going to get the first goal for them here. We need to see his POV to identify if he had any idea the ball was actually near him. Oh, he did. Well done. Okay, he was paying attention. I wasn't sure if until the last second he knew that was coming, but he actually had his eye on the ball for a while, and he was positioning to that side of the post to make the goal a bit bigger uh, way before it reached him. So really uh, good awareness there. Oh, yeah, I just realized it says Vitality and, S and Spain, doesn't it? I should really change that to Vitality and G1. Because, um, yeah, we've got two actual rosters here. G1 Esports have picked up Oli for the uh, for the spring split. Oli, who was left without a team after his bench from Oxygen. And they acquired Rise, who's now left. And, uh, <laughs> you know, Oxygen have had quite a storied season, haven't they? Lots of different teams, lots of different lineups. Yeah, Oli was another one of those players uh, who really should have had a team. You know, right now, there's a lot of players in that category in Europe. You've got Astral, uh, Extra Sizing, uh, Relating Wave, most notably marked by 8 and Arju as well. All teamless at the moment. Uh, but Oli, before that, before Mark, before he took Mark by its place, he was probably the most notable teamless player um, in Europe. I think he, he's a very, very good player. I don't think he really, you know, I don't think it was really clearly the worst on Oxygen. Like, when when Oxygen acquired Rise in place of Oli, it wasn't because Oli was playing badly. 
it was because Rise was available. Uh, and, you know, a lot of teams all around the world were looking at Rise um, to think about signing him because when Rise is on the table, you've got to pay attention. Almost double reset there from Atomic. Now here comes the counterattack from Zen. Before he can really control the ball, Atomic's already all over him. Oh, RJ's going to be teaming with Hyder and Dead Monster. Okay, that's cool. I'm glad to hear that he's going to have a team. All Italian team um, on the board again. That's cool. cool to hear. Love the positioning here by Atomic. Covering a lot of options with the one goal lead. They don't need to press up close to the near post. Just uh, goes wide to the far post. So any kind of big 50-50, any kind of hard hit will be something you can get a hold of. That unlucky contact there from Rodosin on Zen after he did well to retreat towards the plate. I think you're right, yeah, the title might in fact be wrong. Um, didn't mean that. Let me just really quickly update it if it is in fact wrong. Maybe somebody already did so. Yeah, Oli is a good player. I think G1 is still in the run for the major, in the running for the major with Oli. You know, a lot of people are immediately discrediting them, uh, kind of discarding them because Vitality have picked up Zen. So, you know, the clear top three for most people is, is going to be Vitality, Team Liquid, KC. And when you've only got two spots left, you know, I think a lot of people are more quickly filling those spots with uh, the new and improved uh, BDS and the new and improved uh, Moist even. Um, and yeah, a lot of people are also still giving it to Oxygen with EXO, but I think it's it's very unclear still who those uh, fourth and fifth teams are going to be. I'm also pretty confident in Vitality Team Liquid KC, um, but I think G1, Oxygen, uh, Moist, BDS, I think they're all very, very talented teams. And uh, yeah, yeah, German Amigos as well. You can't count out German Amigos who are just always there or thereabouts. They haven't made any roster changes, but... I think that they've, they've definitely got a shot to get in the mix. Um, yeah, Oli probably underrated overall. Probably an underrated player in the EU scene and just in the wider Rocket League world, I think, as well. I think he's pretty underrated. I think he is an upgrade for Mark in Mark's current form. As sad as it is that Mark by is going to miss another World Championship that he's helped the team qualify for. Right now, G1 are in the running to qualify for the World Championship and Mark has helped them the whole way along doing that just like he did BDS last season before being benched just right before the spring split I mean it's it's a heartbreaker like Mark and Relating Wave two very very sad stories uh, that this this season just because it's a run back from Mark and Relating Wave you know uh, what, a, what a high to go out on before being benched you know you feel sorry for every player who's seamless but you know, sizing it was coming a, lo a long way away. We all we all saw that coming. He probably saw it coming. Um, Extra has been, you know, probably expecting. Yeah, you know, I'm not not playing very well right now compared to the standard I've set for myself last season. So he probably saw that coming as well. But yeah, relating with Mark, they they've just actually done quite well, and then they've ended up teamless. So that's probably I think the the saddest stories when it, when a player does well and ends up without a squad. Oh, Atomic denied the close range reset rebound by brilliant challenge from Rodosin. Zen and Rodosin are stretched thin here. Actually, Zen does have a bit of boost saved over. That's going to help him. Not an easy takeoff here for Zen, but he still makes something off it, as he often does. In fact, he's just scored. How has he made that look so easy? This is a very awkward uh, ball to start with, but simple he does it he noticed that no one is challenging him he noticed that no one was on the ground so he kept the ball on the ground no Astral's a shame yeah definitely I mean Astral's a, 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 a phenomenal player but you know Astral and Extra and uh, yeah, you know they, they didn't go out on a high like they well they didn't have their best split uh, you know, or a great final showing before being benched like uh, like Relight Wave did you know they didn't make major like Mark did before being benched so 
I think it's a little bit more understandable. Um, definitely still sucks, though. Did you guys see Sizen's tweet? He tweeted out that him, Extra, and Astral are going to be uh, teaming this split as the bench warmers or something. And uh, he said that they're not actually allowed to play tournaments together because of contracts, so they're just going to be scrimming. I don't know if that's true or if he's joking, but uh, that's a, a team I would, I would honestly love to see. I think that they could, they could do good things together. Of course, there's always a hope for players like Extra and Sizen that the new signings for their teams don't do well, and then they can talk to the management and say, hey, you, you should get me back in. Uh, like, what, what's going on? The team's falling apart without me. Get me back on the pitch. What a goal by Atomic Zen. First to compliment him in the chat. Great lift on the finishing touch after the reset. It's a double 50-50 of all double 50-50s there. Oh, Redosa has got an open net. Mistake by Spain. But Redosa not able to score before Dorito recovers. He must be having a bit of doubt today. He's not had the best results. First by his otherworldly standards. Anything but a win is uh, not acceptable. Atomic and Dorito are a scary combo. Atomic, one of the absolute best in the world, I feel at the moment. He didn't have the most consistent Winter Major, neither did Dorito. In fact, it was probably more the other way, consistently inconsistent. So in a way, they were consistent. But at least they've, uh, you know, done something memorable at the Winter Major, in my opinion. One of the most legendary throws of all time, Game 4 against G2 in the group stage. And uh, yeah, from then on, it was just a disastrous Major from them. <laughs> Before that, they looked brilliant. Um, yeah, definitely legendary, albeit for the wrong reasons. Now Redosin, gonna try and capitalize on the space. Zen's given him, and he does. Zen demos one, forces the second defender high. And that allowed Redosin to fake the ball underneath him. Yeah, awkward position there for Dorito. Couldn't really get goal side. Second best atomic. It's a great discussion, isn't it? Who's the best Atomic? I love it. I love that it's actually a discussion because you'd expect, you know, if two players in Rocket League have similar names like that, that there's going to be a clear better player between them. But I really don't think it's clear. I think they're both very close in skill. And I think that their, you know, individual impact for their teams has been very comparable as well in the most recent split. Oh, look at this. Spain are back. Two goals in the blink of an eye. Atomic on the scene first for the dead ball. And it's 3-3. It's another disaster for Vitality. I mean, I think... But just look at yourselves in the chat right now. When I say that there is a discussion, you're all proving my point. Because I say that I love that it's a discussion who's better. Because it isn't clear. And then we've got half of you in chat saying, come on, it's clear that G2 Atomic is better. And the other half are saying, come on, it's clear that EU Atomic is better. But, you know, you've all kind of proved it, that you, there's a discussion, an ongoing discussion about which one's better. It's a really cool story, in my opinion. I can't wait to see more chapters of that. Hopefully we do see more chapters of that. Hopefully we see them 1v1 at Gamers 8. That would be like the, <laughs> the best content of all time. If, if G2 run into uh, G1 at Gamers 8 and any Atomic dodges the 1v1 again, I will be very upset. I would be so sad. Because last season, they had missed playing for G2. Um, I can't remember who didn't go. Is it instead of JNAPS? And, you know, Miss and Atomic, they're both, uh, I guess, agreed that they're pretty comparable in one skill. So Miss played instead of uh, Atomic. Oh, man, Spain are just, they're just better right now. They score again off a double commit from Vitality. But yeah, the uh, the Atomic Chicago JNAPS lineup, I think it's clear who the best ones player should be in that trio. It should, it should be Atomic. Atomic should be playing the 1v1s for G2. In my opinion, his skill set is the most transferable to 1v1 because uh, he's the most mechanical by a fair bit. And ones is 
the most mechanical game mode. So if we do not, if, if they match up again and we do not see Atomic versus Atomic, I'm, I'm going to be very upset. And that would be a dodge of epic proportions, for sure. 1v1 means nothing for who's better. Well, I think you'll find, in fact, that 1v1 is the only game mode where it is crystal clear who the better, uh, better player was. When you've got a team game, the better player can lose. When you've got a 1v1, the better player can't lose because the better player always wins in 1v1. So actually, in 1v1, it's, uh, it's very, very, very important, actually. <laughs> I'd say when you're determining who's better. I know, of course, you're referring to the fact that it doesn't matter who's better in 1v1. All that matters is 3v3. Um, you know, that's, that's valid copium is what I'll say. It's valid copium. But I think 1v1 matters a fair bit. Exapic, thanks for the tier 1 and thanks to Kaputu for the prime. And uh, Feko, thanks to the 100 bits as well. It's out. You were not able to complete the comeback against BDS. Nowhere close uh, earlier on. At least not in the series. They completed a couple of single game comebacks before losing by one goal. But will they be able to do it against an in-form Atomic and Dorito? I mean, when Atomic and Dorito play consistently, you know they're going to be a force to be reckoned with because they almost made it out of their group at the Winter Major while playing some of the most inconsistent Rocket League known to mankind. Um, and they've played very consistently in this show match today. Vitality's Radosin is going to be the first, or the second, I mean, to, to score here. How many replays do I have? I couldn't remember if I saved a replay there. That's not the best clear there by Vitality. It's all makes to score it. So Dorito's obviously all over them here, but that touch there from Radosin is just going nowhere safe. He's got a lot of safe locations he could be hitting that. You know, getting it straight up in the air is fine. Keeping control is fine. Putting it back corner is probably fine. Um, but he tries to launch it over the top of Atomic and it just ends up being a pass straight to him. Atomic actually landed on this. Uh, Zen was ready for it. And now Radosin, Demo's last man. Should be there. Oh no, he's not even there for the finish. Well, looks like Radosin expected Zen to have the double tap. But it got away from them both. Another goal gets away from the Vitality duo. You know, in a, in a world full of Phoenix, it is good to see some Octanes sticking around. Dor Dorita's actually apologizing here. Atomic was the one who landed out of position. Oh yeah, Dorito just misread the bounce completely there. He thought it was going to curve round following the wall. And it just bounces off. And it's a wide open goal for Vitality. He might be able to make up for it here. Dorito, lean back reset. Slow shot into the bottom corner. That is some brilliant timing from Dorito. In a very awkward position. He pulls out a lean back reset. And then chips it over the top of both Zen and Radosin. And he does immediately make up for his mistake. Fantastic goal. Well, it looks like the two-goal gap opens up again. So many close cheats here. In fact, I'm kind of surprised we're not seeing too many uh, demo kickoffs by the Spanish duo. I think if they go for it, it's working first time. The difficulty is, uh, you know, w when you come into a lobby of play twos as a, a duo from Spain, or from Saudi Arabia or from Brazil. Everybody knows that you're going to be doing that at some point. So they're always watching like a hawk to try and capitalize and counter your fake kickoffs. I mean, we saw that in uh, Vitality against Naupo and TRK the other day. Is then going to try and go 1v2 Dorito. Denies him that opportunity. Now it's actually Atomic the other way. He's got a reset. Forces a great save out of Radosin. And this actually just more pressure that works out for Spain eventually. They're just doing such a great job of being in position when a clean beat happens, when a good 50 50 happens. I think this is something. The monkey moon was brilliant at when he 
uh, played with Ryze earlier on against Zen and uh, Alpha. You know, just being there in twos is one of the hardest things to, to calculate. I think maybe second man in 2v2 could be the hardest role in all of twos and threes. Not sure if you guys would agree with that, but you know, being first man is not all that difficult strategically. When I say hardest role, I mean in terms of decision making. I feel like first man in any game mode is not that difficult to figure out what you should do because there's just like a plethora of good decisions as uh, yeah, Zen's picked a good one here. But when you're when you're second man in two in, in three v three, I should say, you have backup. When you're second man in twos, you don't. You kind of have to be second and third at the same time, whereas your first has got a lot of the same ideas. So yeah, for me, second man in twos is probably the hardest role in the game, uh, strategically. If we exclude like 1v1, obviously 1v1 is the most strategical game mode, but if we're just talking twos, threes, chaos. Yeah, that that for me is a it's a balance that's hard to find. But I think yeah, Spain have just been better at that today. They've been there for each other. What's first man and second man? Well, right there, Dorito was first man, Atomic was second man. Because Dorito has the, the first play on the ball, he's the one who's leading the attack, and then Atomic is the guy following up, so he's the second man into the attack there. Um, and you know whoever, who the first man and who the second man who the third man will be changes all the time Rocket League's a very fluid game there aren't rigid positions um, but you'll you'll have tendencies some players gravitate towards certain positions more often than others um, you know, even in 2v2 you'll have some some teams that have a very defined first second man think back to Ahmad and Khaled when they first uh, burst onto the scene Ahmad was very much a first man in 2's Khaled Second man, you know, following up on what Ahmad's doing, uh, trying to cover the counter-attacking options that the other team have. You've got to be good at both. You can't be just good at one and not the other. You need to be an all-rounder in Rocket League if you're going to succeed. Now, the reason I say second man is harder is because you've got to decide, is that safe to go for? You know, my first man, he's kind of centered the ball there, but not really. It's kind of a pass to the goalkeeper as well just depends if I can get there fast enough and you've got to just in the blink of an eye make a decision can I get there or is that too much of a risk um, we you know we noticed Dorito earlier on apologized for conceding after committing awkwardly a second man and uh, you know sometimes first man leaves second man completely out to dry and it's just a very tough position to be in it's, it's yeah second man you're you're often exposed you're often given tough decisions to make um, and yeah it's, it's just a more I think challenging position than just being first in twos Is there a way to watch this uh, from the beginning? Well, yeah, the, the VOD is automatically uploading on Twitch as we speak, so you can, you can watch. Oh dear, oh dear, how has that happened? Oh, what a save by Zed! I guess we'll never know how it happened, because we're not going to see the replay. <laughs> what a save! After the silliest double commit of the day award goes to Vitality. We didn't even get a good look at that one. It's, it's kind of the annoying thing about saves every now and then. You, you wonder, oh, I wish I could go POV for that. That was unreal. But you can't do it in the moment. You have to save the replay and look at it later. Okay, Vitality are in this. One game on the board for them. They need two more if they're going to win, of course. But that is something. Let's start. Well, let's see if they can get any more. Right, apologies for that quick uh, delay. Let's get into game four. It looks like the... Spectator, it does watch. Spit kickoff for Spain. They're finally going to pull out the, the strats we've been waiting for. Yeah, it looks like the Spectator does wait for uh, for everybody to join, even for me to join Spectate there before starting. I think after a while it will start, but yeah, it didn't immediately go there. Do I think NRG is going to do good? It depends what you mean by good. Um, I don't think that they're likely to qualify for the next LAN, so. For me, uh, you know, I think players of Justin, Garrett, and Squishy's caliber, teams with NRG's history, should be going for nothing other than qualifying for land. That should be what their benchmark is for an acceptable split, you know? So if, if that's uh, what we consider good, then I no, I don't think NRG is going to do good, I guess, because I don't think they're, they're going to qualify. I think it's just uh, going to be a bit tough to break into the top five. They've not done it yet this season. They were close in the fall uh, split, but yeah, I think now V1 improving, Furia improving, 
and uh, complexity having improved last split, kind of joining the, the big three in NA, G2, FaZe, and Gen G, uh, the two teams that have made both majors. Yeah, it's very tough. I, I don't see energy making the major this se uh, this season at all. I don't think they'll see them making any lands. Um, but good luck to them. You know, it would be an amazing Cinderella story if they did make a land again. That would just, you know, it would be, it would probably just feel like such a relief and, you know, such a, such a vindicating thing at the same time for the players because so many people have said that team needs a roster change. Even I've said at times, I think they need a roster change and you know, right now, you put a gun to my head and said, do energy need to change change the, the roster? I'd probably say, yeah. Uh, I'd lean towards, yeah. But obviously, they're a very secretive team. They don't really publicize a lot of what's going on behind the scenes. So, I don't know if uh, they need a roster change. I don't, don't really know enough about what's going on behind the scenes to tell you conclusively. But yeah, from what I see on the pitch, I think they do. Great fake there by uh, uh, Atomic. Dosen waiting a bit too long before going. Yeah, but I think energy are still in the mix. I think if that's just, if the if the teams I mentioned previously are the top six in the region, you know I think Space Station are a team that energy can beat. I think Dignitas are a team that can beat. I think you know teams like Optic and um, M80. I think they're all teams that energy can beat, so I think, you know, they, they could definitely get like a 7th or something. Uh, this split, which which would not be good enough, by the way. That would not be good enough for Worlds, most likely. But, um, you know, maybe V1 or Furia don't bring their uh, their expected form into, into the actual RLCS split. Because it's double elimination, anything could happen. That's probably the biggest benefit for NRG is that the, vo this, the format's so volatile, they just have to be good on one day. Wait, <laughs> what happened here? Atomic just completely missed uh, a routine save, I'm pretty sure. Oh, he fell on the post. Oh, no, he tripped on the post. <laughs> Did you guys notice, by the way, at the bottom right there, Atomic was watching the replay. We've all done that. You know, we know that the other, the other team are going to watch the replay of us beating it or getting faked. So you need to watch the replay as well, just to show them that you don't care, that you're watching it, uh, or uh, that you're being forced to watch it. Um, yeah, really nice move there by Atomic. That's what I would have done. I've tripped on the post many times, and every time I do it, I make sure that everyone else has skipped the replay before I do. Because if someone's going to make me watch it, you best believe I'm already watching it. Or at least that's what I want them to think. So pretty smart move there by Atomic. Really the only positive you could take away from that. Um, as Vitality continue their comeback. They're actually doing this. I, I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm mega, mega petty just in general. And in Rocket League, it's no different. When I'm playing Rocket League, if, uh, if somebody like watches the replay of one of their goals, you can bet I'm watching like every replay. Like, especially if it's 1v1 and they watch one replay of their goal that they scored. And I'm like, that's not even a good goal. I'm watching every replay from now on, just fully watching every replay, just to you know get back at them for watching one game. And yeah, you know, might a lot. Some of you might think well, that's just super petty. What you're doing, like, why do you care? But I mean, I reckon, I reckon we're all doing that. I think we're all the same. Um, <laughs> we're all. I reckon we're all the same. In a way, I'm like, oh, you did it. You did not just watch one replay. Because now, now you've watched one replay, you're watching all the replays. You didn't know what you were in for here. If he, if they knew what they're signing up for, they wouldn't have watched one, because now you're watching them all. Alright, final minute of game four. Looks like Vitality are going to have a lead late. They are. Yeah, Zen has switched off the Fennec. He's in the Octane. I think Zen's just, you know, trying to experiment today. He's not feeling great in any car, so he keeps changing. Um... Oh, will he be able to make the reverse sweep happen? Tomic and Dorito getting uh, flashbacks. PTSD of the Winter Major right now, not another reverse sweep. Oh, brilliant play by Rudosin here. He's done very well there. That's tough for Spain to really do anything with, but Dorito and Tomic have put something together. Zen's ready for it. 
composed by Bridgerton again. Just not playing too risky. So it limits what Spain can do with the remaining time, and they will not get another shot on target. It's 2-2. We're going game five to decide it. I have to briefly mention, by the way, you know, uh, probably a couple people are tuning in to this uh, match and thinking, where's the play-by-play? -play? Even for Johnny standards, there's a lack of play-by-play -play here, but it's uh, it's 12.30 in the morning, so I'm kind of like, you know, chilling out with it a little bit. Uh, hopefully you forgive me for that. We've done the third third show match in a row here, so want to switch it up a little bit, uh, like, I, like I always say. Don't want to make all, any matches sound the same. I guess it's more, it, well, it, it's less about trying to make every match sound different and probably just trying to remain authentic. I try to cast exactly how I feel about a game so that it doesn't feel, um, it never feel fake. Like, that's a, you know, I was a big fan of esports long before I was a Rocket League commentator. And uh, definitely the thing that annoyed me the most from other esports that I was a fan of, uh, you know, the thing that annoyed me the most about casting that I'd listen to would be just things that sounded too hype for what's actually happening or things that sound too too anything for what's actually happening I felt like that that just annoyed me and it didn't sound authentic so that's uh, really I think shaped a lot of my own commentary is that I just try to be as accurate as I am oh what a goal what a passing play by Spain in a world of solo plays they've put together a very nice one-two pass Dorito waits for the pre-jump slots it right past him This would be a heartbreaker for Zen. Not three in a row. It's three goals in a row, but it could be three losses in a row if it keeps going like this. Fake kickoff for Spain. I think Dorito might have been messing with Zen off screen there as we were watching Atomic shoot. Game five, Champions Field. I don't know. That's not really what I do. Over here. I just I just like Manfield Night. You know, sometimes we look at new maps, but. We've been on Manfield Night ever since Manfield Night was a thing. We've been doing show matches in the Manfield Night since it came out. Um, before that, it was Manfield. I don't know, just the most atmospheric, most this this, this, this show match arena. Uh, I've always just felt that way. Great save by Dorito. Spain are frustrating France here. G1 are frustrating Vitality. Still a lot of time left in the game, but do Vitality believe? Do they have what it takes? Create the necessary goals. We've conceded another one. I think Vitality just look a bit rushed here. They're not doing enough with their possession. I mean, usually every Zen possession is just solid gold. He, he just turns everything into a threat. And they're in a bit of a hurry here to get the comeback started. Instead of just taking their time with their touches. Rodilson in field to Zen. Best chance of the game so far. Dorito, oh, he's kept it out. He dodges the demo and stands strong in the face of the 50-50. Can Vitality find a way through? It's been so tough to get past the synergized Spain. Atomic covers Redosen's backboard, and not only that, He's shot on target and it's in! What a shot by Atomic, an effortless half volley off the back wall. He didn't even jump for it. <laughs> it might have even glitched through Redosen there. Not that it mattered, Zen was a bit too far forward. He did not see the threat. Atomic just pings one in from the other side of the pitch. Oh, it's just over, isn't it? 6-0. Ah, it's just it's moments like these where I think France need an, another kickoff because this is not not gonna you know get enough goals for them. It's just standard, standard, standard all the way. Remains my biggest criticism of French two v two, but obviously that's not all that's gone wrong today. Um, they have been out synergized. I think it's back to the drawing board for Vitality's uh, different two v two duos. I think in. Uh, Zen and Alpha's case, it was defensive synergy that was lacking. They just didn't back each other up fast enough in defense a lot of the time. And this series, it's uh, you know been a bit of both. But there's actually still so much time left. You know what? It's it is winnable. 
this is definitely another really big chance. Oh, <laughs> what's a goal by Zen? It's definitely winnable though. <laughs> That's going to give them some confidence. <laughs> Need to see this from the defense POV. Yeah, it's just unreadable. <laughs> it's absolutely unreadable. Still almost half the game to go and four goals. Seems a lot a lot better than uh, six did. Zen's actually wide open here. Redosin finds him. Zen, air dribble. Actually just shoots it off the top of the bounce. Redosin again has Zen as an option. Fakes it. Instead shoots. Oh, a goal by Redosin. Well, they're just peaking now. After they went six goals down. No doubt Doritos waiting for that to be a pass. Yeah, look at him. He's, he's getting ready to close down a pass. Expecting Redosin to pick out Zen at the edge of the box. Redosin snipes it right over his head. What a comeback already. I mean, they've got a long way to go still. But two minutes to do it with. And if they can keep on attacking like this, I think everybody believes. Here comes Rudosin again. He's away with a lean back reset. Big 50-50. Oh my goodness. What are we witnessing? They've got a minute and 53 left and it is absolutely a game. This will be the biggest 2v2 comeback I've ever seen. I can pretty confidently say that. I mean, six goal comeback in 1v1 is rare. Never mind in 2v2. This is absolutely unprecedented. Zen's got another solo air dribble. Atomic's just respawned. He doesn't have a lot of boost. Redosin, free shot. Oh, he couldn't get around it, but they're still all over Spain here. Zen trying to call Redosin to fake this. Didn't come in fast enough. And they don't need to rush it anymore. They've actually got so much time. Like, you know, before 6-0, yeah, fair enough. You have to go for it with every play, but look at this. They have so much time left. Zen's coming at them again. Flicks it wide. That boost is not there to be stolen. So that probably means Atomic's going to get away with this. Still over a minute for Vitality to work with. Zen. Turning every possession into a threat like we talked about earlier. You know, he didn't do it earlier in the game, but now he is. Rodos has had his fair share of clips as well. I mean, this guy is so, such an improved player over the past year or year and a half. Triple threat Vitality Atomic. Catches Zen moving forward, but he doesn't strike on target. Now Redosin offloads to Zen, who shoots first time. Looking to catch Dorito off his line. Spain making it difficult for Vitality here. They've gotten into the midfield back and forth. And whereas previously Vitality had time, now it's getting a bit more tricky. Zen infield. Redosin with a banger. It's not accurate. Needed to be in one of the corners and it would have probably been a goal. Zen launches downfield. Atomic quickly up to stop it. 20 seconds left. Now we are in last chance territory for Vitality. It's Rudosin. Up to Zen, who decides not to jump. He knew Dorito's going to get there first. But was that the last chance that they had? A valiant effort from Vitality. Unless Zen can get this in in a hurry, it's going to be all for nothing. But he does get it in in a hurry. It's not over. Three seconds to go. Vitality are back in it. You guys know what I think the play is? Read the fake kickoff. I think you've just got to read the fake kickoff. Drive straight through the ball here. There's a decent chance Spain are faking it. Are Spain going to fake this? They are, you know. Yep. Oh, it was the play. Oh, I don't believe it. Oh, no. Oh, I knew it. I just knew it. Ah, guys, I need to be a kickoff coach. I really do. I feel like I'm leaving a lot of money on the table here. Ah, that was painful to watch. <laughs> I just, I knew they were going to fake it. And they even made it... I'm going to be honest. I think they made it quite obvious. We need to look at... We need to look at Zen and uh, Redosin's POV of this. But I think that they could have seen this coming. Because that was a very, very standard fake kickoff setup. They did not... It's close cheat. Like, if Spain faked that with a close cheat, fair enough. That's hard to see coming. But they just did this standard little drive in a circle move that every team who's faking does... Who was it? Was it Zen or Redosin? I think it was Redosin. Oh, wow. That could have been incredible. Yeah, it was Redosin. Yeah, Redosin should have shot this. That's just a drive kickoff. That is just a drive. You have to drive through that. You have to shoot. Because look at Atomic in the backfield. Atomic's done a little circle. He's faking a, you know, a back corner kickoff there with his initial move. But as you're landing, you, before you even have to do, decide what you're going to do, Atomic's turned back indicating that a fake or something sneaky is happening and you can just drive right through it but I think all the signs pointed towards fake kickoff here 
Spain had started doing it in games four and five. Um, so, of course, I think it was it was something that Spain are going to be thinking about. But if Vitality just drove the, through the ball in the kickoff there, it, it kind of, it's a kind of killing two birds with one stone as well. It's not just an all-in, let's hope they're faking it. Because um, obviously, like, Atomic could be, you know, pretending to set up a fake kickoff by driving in the circle. And then Dorito just hits it, you know, double mind game kind of deal. But even if they are double mind gaming it, and that's like a, you know, not a real fake kickoff on the way, when Atomic does a circle at the back, a drive kickoff is actually a decent setup for a zero second play anyway, because you can just soft cheat with your second man, and then the ball's probably going to bounce up into the ceiling, and you can just shoot as it bounces or catch it. So yeah, I, I've got to say, I think Vitality, they, they had it staring at them in the face. That was nearly the craziest comeback I've ever seen in 2v2. And uh, yeah, I just wish I was their coach telling them in their ear what to do there, because <laughs> for once, for once... Uh, we were able to see it coming. I, I say this all the time, though. It's very easy for me to sit here and think, wait, what were the kickoffs Spain did earlier in this match? Are they going to fake this? You know, it's it's very easy for me to remember that because I'm, I'm telling you guys the story of the game as we go here. Whereas when you're playing, very difficult to remember that unless you're actively making a mental note. They faked kickoff. They faked another kickoff. Unless you're telling yourself that, very difficult to remember what's happened earlier. I think France were probably just in the moment thinking... Let's win another kickoff possession and see if we can get a goal.